Okay, hello. So I'm talking to uh, one of our customers who I've never actually had a chance to speak with before. Um, and we're gonna talk about his application for PEMF for the ICES PEMF. But, you know, like I say, there's other forms of PEMF that would work. Just because I happen to make one doesn't mean it's the only one that works. Um, some are good and some, some don't work so well as far as I can tell biologically. So my question is, I'm just gonna have a regular conversation with Martin to see what he's tried and how it's working for him. So Martin, you <coughs> had told me in an email that you had used this for your mother's Parkinson's disease, correct? Yes. And um, so, so can you describe what sort of condition she was in and, and, and how it helped her? And then maybe you can tell us how you were using it because I actually don't have a lot of direct experience with it. All right, sure. <clears throat> so with Parkinson's, the, there's two, two main things. Um, some people, they shake in uh -huh. different ways and others people can't, other people can't move. So it, there's like two main things, right? Either sh shaking in different ways. Some people shake their leg or their hand or their, or their head um, or their whole body and others, they, they can't move or at least they, they have periods of time where they, where they can't move. So their motor function kind of fluctuates throughout the day. Um, and, but what happens then is um, as the disease, because it is a degenerative disease, as it progresses um, over time, you also can't uh, keep your balance, which means that you start using a, a walker or something to support your walking. But then when you had it for many years, say 15 plus years, that's when your brain really starts to, and well, meltdown i guess because that's when you start to see things see things that aren't there and hear things that aren't there um and also like the, the whole like the the person that used to be in there really isn't in there anymore like it's it's a very very different person almost like with alzheimer's or dement dementia or whatever other uh disease so the person that was once there really isn't there anymore and so I was looking to find something that could help um, in some way, because the drugs that there, there are very there few drugs for, for Parkinson's. There is one that gives the patient uh, dopamine, which is the thing that your brain no longer creates um, enough or anything of. But apart from that, there really isn't that much that you can give someone who is in late stage of Parkinson's. The only thing that you can really give them are these really nasty psychological drugs that you would normally give to people with like schizophrenia or Alzheimer's or, you know, some really nasty drugs. And those do help for some people to some degree. Um, but for my mom, it didn't really help. It actually made it worse. Um, so she was really out of options. And, um, and the, the way it, 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 it affected her was that she was really like really far out there. I mean, you, and, and the thing too is that it's not fixed, like it, it fluctuates over the, the course of the day. So she has periods in between where, where she's more there than other times. Um, and then, you know, so some days are good and so some days are bad, but, but she can have, you know, several hours where she's just like, you know, sitting there staring at the wall and, and she's, you know, r r really gone. Um, so it's very, very strange to see that, that the whole, like um, the, the person kind of fluctuates almost like between different personalities. Um, but then what what I did was I got the um, B, BM1 and basically started to see what it can do. And so long story short was um, I did a lot of different, um, well, experiments, I guess, to see, you know, what configuration would work. You know, is it a single coil? Is it a double coil? Is it side by side? And then I know from reading up on Parkinson's over the years, my mom has had Parkinson's for 17 years. So she's had it for a long, long time. And these issues that she has now only started about a year ago. Um, until then, she was just um, disabled motor-wise, where you know, she had trouble walking and you know, doing things uh, with her hands. Um, but then it, it started to really affect her mentally. And that's really when I started looking at, you know, what can we do? There has to be something. At least I hope that, that, that I could find something. Um, but what I found was 
or what I know is that there's a, I don't, I, I don't remember what it's called, but there's, there's a part of your brain in the back of your head, mm -hmm. which is what the experts say is the, the part that is mostly affected by Parkinson's. And so the- Well, actually, I'd like to make a comment because I actually did study this in graduate school, right? Okay. So a specific part of your brain uh, and, and specific cells in your brain called substantia nigra. So ah. it's really quite localized. And these cells essentially stop producing dopamine, right? Um, right. And, and the thing is that they knew this 35 years ago. And so far as I can tell, there, there haven't been really any clinical advances in it, right? So this is the tragedy of Parkinson's disease is that, you know, we, we know the cells that aren't working. And the other thing is that unlike most kinds of brain injury, which we're not quite sure where the problem is with Parkinson's disease, we actually can kind of pinpoint it, right? Because right. we know yeah. it's always going to be in that same part. And I think it's in the upper part of the brain stem or close to yeah. it, but it's in the substantia nigra, which is a limited area. So you do have the advantage that you can kind of focus your, your treatment, your, your placement on the coils in one place. But anyway, so yeah, please continue. Sure. So, so I started, <clears throat> so I started, like I said, I had three different, <clears throat> excuse me, three different configurations, like single coil, stack coil, or side by side. And so I started with um, right in the back of the neck, Mm -hmm. That was kind of my, my starting point. To and the base of the skull, sort of like at the right where the skull ends and goes into the vertebra. Is that why it was? Or a little higher? Right, right at, the, at the very back, like right, right at, the, at the very back of your head. Okay. So, so basically the exact opposite of your nose, basically. Okay. Um, and the weird thing was the day that I got the, um, the M1, I turned it on, put it to 10, and then I double stacked it and then mm -hmm. I went to see my mom and I put it in the back of her head. And within five minutes, she, she started talking. <laughs> wow. And, wow. I, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> um, and, and so basically from, from, from there, I started um, experimenting with, with, with different places because what I found out was that um, if I kept it at the same spot over time, it wasn't as effective. And so basically the three points that I'm using right now is um, side by side and it's at the top of the head. So I'm at the crown. Mm -hmm. So right here. Okay. And also here on the top back and then okay. on the uh, on the back side. So these three are, are the main points um, that I use. And those are the three points that I found to be the most effective. And I've also found that side by side is more effective than stacked or single coil. Wow. Okay. So if side by side is, and, and that's, that's an important thing to know because different areas of, of the body, like your lower spine or your knee or something like that, it really does matter which way you put the coils. Like you're talking about side by side like this, right? Yes. Yep. To stack. yes exactly. So like, they go like side by side. Saying. Interestingly, what happens if you put them side by side is the magnetic field spins around through the coils, sort of shaped oh, like a donut, right? Wow. You can imagine the magnetic field, it's going into one coil and around out the other and the other. So the, the things, the magnetic field itself is a, is a donut shape, right? Wow. Stack them, then the magnetic field is shaped like a mushroom on each end. It goes out, expands, curves around, comes back, contracts, expands. So what you're really doing is you're changing the direction of the magnetic, what's called flux lines, but we, it's a conceptual thing that says, well, if we think about magnets sort of a certain way, we think about, you, you know, you've seen like the planet Earth where they draw magnet lines, you know, going from right. Right to the that's the flux lines. And, and so the reason that I put two coils on this thing is so that you can literally play around with the flux lines. And this is something you can't do with whole body PMF. So, so I do think in some areas, and certainly it seems to be on the brain type issues, being able to control the direction the magnetic flux lines are going is really quite important. And, and it seems like you discovered that by experimenting, right? Yeah, right. because because in, in the beginning, I also tried using it on the, the, the dimples. Yeah. One on on on, on either side. Um, that really had limited effect. Um, really? See? Yeah. Wow. And, and that's kind of what I would expect, too, because if you go sort of front 
to you know middle to front of the brain you're so far away from the substantia nigra yeah. right you can have a kind of an overall inflammatory reduction like a, you know we've shown scientifically this causes a reduction in inflammation it probably does other things we just don't know but uh, yeah the further you are away from it the less less effective it would be so yeah um so 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 by using a side by side that that's been by far the most um effective side by so, side at the base of the skull or side by side alternating no, all, between these three spots all, all three so do you do one one day and then one the next day one the next so, day so so what i've done is i do a couple of days uh in in one spot and, and, and then i basically s s cycle through them right because, because what I found was if I use the same spot all the time after a couple of days, it kind of isn't mm -hmm. as effective anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I do, you know, different spots every single day, again, it's like the, there is some wow. kind of, a, I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. This, so, there's a thing called habituation. It's like if you right. do the same exercise every day, you know, or the same stimulus, your body just gets used to it and starts to not pay attention. So it seems to me like there's some sort of brain stimulatory thing going on that has to be kind of novel. And so you yeah. have to put around. So, so I'm gonna, I'll ask you a couple of quick technical questions. Then you said the setting was on 10, right? No, 15, 15, 15. So you had a max maximum power, yeah. right? Yeah. And then uh, what pulse pattern did you use? Do you remember? Omni yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. So it's the, it's the, it's the B5, C5. B5, C5, which is very similar to Omni A, yeah. Okay, so B5, C5, that's good to know. That's really good because you know that has some lower frequency and then some higher frequency stuff. Okay, that's really cool. And how long did you use it? Do you do it every day? Yeah, I use it every day for anywhere from half an hour to, to an hour. Half so an hour to an hour every day, yeah. maximum power set to the pulse pattern B5, C5 yeah. with the coil side to side. Yes. Uh, alternating between sort of the base of the skull directly opposite of your nose to yep. upper back of the yes. skull to yep. side by side on top of the head yep. over the, yep. maybe straight up over where the spine. Would be. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know, that is the best description anyone has ever given me of, of wow. this for Parkinson's disease. Thank you so much. That's really great because hmm. I've had, I've had six or seven, maybe eight people tell me that they've used it for their elderly parents and they tell me it's great. And then I, and I try to talk to them and they're, and they're, 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 it's like they lose interest or something. It's really strange, hmm. but they'll, they'll reassure me that, Oh, it worked really great. And I'll say, really, can you, can you tell me? So I really appreciate the feedback. That's really sure. outstanding. And now I can say we had one person specifically tell me how they used it. And, and it makes a lot of sense because you're using it in the right part of the brain, you know, um, and, and you're um, changing the location. So you avoid habituation. You're also using high power because you got to penetrate. It's really quite a deep part of the brain. And then, um, you know, every day um, with a pulse pattern that contains low frequency patterns and higher frequency. And that actually, that kind of frequency does matter for brain stimulation. You know, there's this paper recently published from MIT where they're using kind of higher frequency stuff to uh, help with strokes and, 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 um, you know, uh, essentially reprogramming the brain by stressing it a little bit and then kind of sort of like exercise or right? stress the brain a little bit and then it kind of mm -hmm. patterns itself. Yeah, so it's interesting. I'm going to start working with that. But that's very, very helpful for me to know that I really appreciate it. So now maybe I can help some other people. So is there anything that you wanted to ask me or, or, or anything else well, there, you tell me about that I can help there's one there's one thing that that I want to add, <laughs> and that is that um, uh, apart from the regular um, issues that she has or had with with a person, and and also the issues now with you know being mentally gone, she also has these um, like nerve attacks where she, she her, her head her her lower legs start to hurt, like she dis, 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 describes it like they're being wound w way too tight. Wow. Yeah, and and that's because um, her neur neurologist is saying that it's because she's had it so long that her nervous system is starting to, you know, do do different things. And so what I've noticed, and this is just 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 recently, because um, over the past few weeks I've started a experimenting with 
because these she gets these like on and off. Um, and then what I noticed was when I used the the side by side and put it on the top of her head because before I, I gave her the treatment either in the morning or um, in the evening, and then I didn't use it when she had these um, attacks because she was literally crying because it, it hurt so much. Yeah. Um, but then then here a few weeks ago, I was thinking, hmm, could we use this like as a, you know, to, to, to help with this seizure or whatever you, you want to call it. So I tried placing it on different places on her, on her head, like the, these three different ah. configurations. And, and what I found was when I do it here and here, doesn't do much, but when I place it here, literally within 10 seconds, she calms down and, and then it, it just kind of subsides and goes away. Right. You know, that was, I was going to guess that because your motor and your premotor areas for your programming for like, you know, contracting muscles and everything is right here. It goes along the side of your brain on the side like that from the top. So what I was thinking might be happening is that, you know, because people with Parkinson's have difficulty initiating movement, Right. They also have difficulty maintaining what's called tonus, like regular muscle tone, right? And so then the brain starts compensating by putting out these spurious signals to like activate muscles. And this is maybe why she feels all tightened up. And then right. if you can actually stimulate the motor areas of the brain, um, it might it it might very well allow you to sort of reestablish tone because if your brain's not getting these these initiative signals to initiate not just movement, that's what we notice clinically, but also regular muscle tone, then it will start to make things up on its own, right? Right. <laughs> that, that might be what your mother's experiencing. So you said within about 10 seconds, right? It's really fast. It's wow, really, you know, really fast. I, I Some people just don't believe it, but actually for my back pain, because you know, I had a really, really bad accident when I was a firefighter like 10 years ago, and it was this inoperable back injury, and I, I couldn't, I mean, I was... I had to pop opioids and everything. You'd, you know, <laughs> you'd think I was in Amsterdam, but I wasn't. I was here in the United <laughs> States where they put you in jail for that, <laughs> right? And, uh, um, but no, I had the maximum kind of uh, prescriptions. It was just not helping that much, right? Wow. And I started, that's, that's actually why I developed this PEMF system was because I had this really crippling pain. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even lie down. It was terrible. But luckily I already had a system that I was developing for an industri industrial application. But the reason I mention this is that for the for me the effects were very fast within a few minutes. Some people it takes a few hours or days. But the other thing I noticed, and I was going to ask you about this, do you see the effects persist with your mother too? Like once you've done it for a while, does it kind of keep going for a few hours? And then no, nope. yeah. So 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 what I've noticed I've noticed two things. Um, one is that very very shortly after we're talking within minutes of starting the, the the treatment i notice a change so if she isn't like clear and i put the cause on her very very quickly after talking within a, a few minutes i can see a change in her face and i can also feel a change in in her you know the way she is yeah, yeah. and 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 so, so the, there is there is a, an almost immediate change to some degree but what i've noticed over the course of all this testing is that um the biggest difference comes actually the day after oh wow that is so interesting you know yeah. I mean, first of all let me just say this is wonderful because i love the idea that we can help people you know because i know how much suffering there is i kind of feel it you know, I'm almost like i feel this just this massive amount of suffering that's unnecessary I just, I just have a sense for it. And it's just wonderful to hear that, you know, it's helping somebody, but it's also really interesting, actually, intellectually to me as a scientist. I'm like, why, why would that happen? Because, you know, a lot of these stimulators like nerve stimulators or pain blockers, they work as long as you use them. When you turn them off, they just, they don't work anymore. Right. So this is the thing to me that's fascinating about PEMF is well, it has can, a deeper kind of effect. I can give you a really good, um, a really good, Good example. Um, when I had, when I had figured out the right configuration and and everything, um, the the first time that she had it on here, 
with the double with the double uh, configuration. She had it on. I think it was in the afternoon, and she was fine afterwards, um, better than before. Right. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is cool. You know, there was a, a little change. I think this this is great. But then the next morning, um, after a couple of hours during the day, suddenly she comes to me and says, you know what? I think I'm going uh, uh, to start um, learning about computers. She, she wanted to get on a course or something. And I was like, where did that come from? Because, yeah, I mean, it was like. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, I, I can tell you the interesting thing for me, and a lot of people I've talked to, it's like when all of a sudden the pain or the weird unexplained disability goes away, one of the most interesting effects is you start to get a new, renewed interest in life. Actually, I can say uh, that. Personally. Right. So like, it's, it's, it's like you, you know, you become this thing that's not really fully human when you're in a huge amount of pain or disability and you're just, your whole focus is on it. And if you can lift that burden off of yourself or, or, or someone else, then they can start to think about, you know, what were they interested in again? What kind of things did they find, you know, interesting human interactions, you know, what kind of beauty in life. And that's, that's actually the, the unspoken tragedy of some of these disabilities is it kind of takes that part of your, your humanity away. So I'm just, I'm just delighted. I, I can't tell you, I'm just absolutely delighted that your mother, and so, so you, you know, that she's feeling better. And Much better. That is Much just better. fantastic, man. Anything we can do to help you, that is, that is great. Um, so, so how long have you been having success with this? It's been a few so, months, isn't it? Yeah, I got it in early August. Yeah. And the first month was really trying like all kinds of different things. Oh. Um, so, so, but for the, the, the biggest change has been really the, the past two months because that's when I kind of got dialed in. So, you know, double core, that's really right, when right. I started figuring out the, the best configuration because the first few months it was just trying to figure out, okay, let me do this and let me try this. Oh, that had an effect. Well, you know, so it's really like trial and error. The, the, the first three months was really a lot of trial and error. Just well, that's good that you were persistent and you stuck with it because a lot of people, they want me to just tell them right away, okay, how do I use it? Because they're in such pain or disability. And sometimes like with certain kinds of pain, I can tell a person, yeah, just do exactly this. But then when it comes to something like head injury, it's a lot harder. You know, I could, yeah. take, I could take a guess with Parkinson's, like I would have guessed behind, you know, the base of the skull, I would guess that would probably be one of the best places, but you were able to find it by experiment. But I guess, I guess the, uh, the thing that I really always tell people, they don't always want to hear this, is that if you want to be successful with this, you do have to experiment as you did a fair amount. But uh, wow, so that's, that's really cool. And so do you see that, is she over time getting progressively better, do you think? Well, she is, I mean, she was in a really, she was in a really crappy place um, a, a few months ago. Like she was yeah. really, like really far out. Um, she's doing much, much better now. So the, the, the really, the thing for me is to see, you know, how much better can she get? You know, yeah. like, like, I mean, I mean, if she was, I mean, I would say she was, let, let's say 10 is the worst. She was probably around nine. I mean, she was really, really bad. And now she's, I don't know, way, way down. So she still has, you know, issues and stuff, but it's much, 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 much less than she had a few months ago. Well, I can tell you another thing for me psychologically was, was when they told me, you know, my back was inoperable and I was going to be kind of crippled. They kind of said, it's just going to get worse your whole life. And here I was like 43 years old, right? And I'm thinking, God, I got a lot of life left, right? I mean, it's just going to get worse. It's going to go from really bad to worse. But the good thing about, for me, the system, you know, as I was developing it, was instead of continuously getting a little bit worse, I started continuously getting a little bit better. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? And psychologically, look, waking up the next morning and thinking, I'm just a little bit better than it was. Yeah, a little bit less pain, a little bit less... You know, eventually I was able to give up the opioids completely. I had no trouble doing that either. I was, I was just delighted. I handed a bottle back to my doctor and he was like, what's that for? And I said, well, that, that's never happened before. You know, <laughs> he said, no, you, nobody had ever given him back a, a full bottle of, of you know, Oxycontin. It, no, it had never happened to him before. But I just didn't want it anymore. Didn't, I hated this stuff. And uh, so, so, but the key thing, for me for a long time was like 
I'm not getting worse anymore. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm not all the way there, but at least it's a little bit better every day. And I'm, I'm guessing your mother probably has that kind of feeling, you know, to the extent that she can really sense that she, she is getting better functionally. Oh yeah. I mean, like I said, she's become much, much better. And the, because what I'm thinking now is, well, now we've done it once a day. Well, what if we do it twice a day? Well, see, this is what I'm thinking too. I was just thinking that I was going to, cause I was going to try to think of ways I could help with this. Um, one thing is um, you might turn up the intensity down a little bit because I find over time I need less and less. And sometimes too uh -huh. much is a little too stimulatory. So I was going to tell you that with pain, um, about 70% of people tell me that, yeah, if they put it on full power, it helps them. But about 30% of people say, no, nah, it's not working. But if I can get them to dial it down to about nine or 10, then about 95% of people say, oh yeah, it helps. So a lot of people, it's kind of one of these weird things where you, you do need to, you do need to adjust it a little bit. And the way that you dose PEMF, it's not like twice the intensity half the time. It doesn't work that way. It's sort of like you want to cross the threshold and then maintain it. So, okay. so just to help you, I would think one thing you might want to consider trying is lower the dosage. Well, it doesn't have to be a lot, go to maybe 11 or 12, and then try a couple times a day, spread it out, right? And and you might uh, see that you get another sort of a step up in, a, in improvement. And I would actually, I'd love to hear from you because you have our email, of course, you, you can email us anytime. But sure. wow, that's, that's really cool. So other things that you might do, have you tried other patterns? Yes, I, 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 I've tried the uh, A9 as well. Okay. Um, because what I found in the beginning was that once I've been on the B, the B5 for okay, let's right. say a week or two, suddenly I saw like a, a, a drop in the, uh, in the, uh, right. Effective. So I switched, over, I switched over to the A9 for a couple of days and then I had a drop in that and then I went back. Wow. So, okay. so, so what I do is anytime I, I, I notice a drop because it, it seems that B5 is the most effective, but when there's a drop in, in B5, I go to A9 for just a couple of days until there's a drop there, and then I go back again. So one thing that you might consider trying, because because it's brain involved, have you tried the alpha wave? No. Give that a try. Actually, that's kind of what I use on myself, and that's the brainwave frequency range that's most related to a calm, alert awareness. Hmm, okay. So so a lot of people find it, you know, a lot of people find that it makes them very aware, right? But not in a bad way. And some people find it helps them really relax, but in a, in a very aware way, like they're relaxed, but they're aware. So so you might try that one. And that's sort of in the 10 to 15 pulses, well, 10 to 14 pulses per second. So not really high frequency, not really low frequency. But you might try an alpha wave and you might try, you know, a couple of the other ones too, like Schumann even though I don't think that it's necessarily because it's resonating with anything. It's just a good set of frequencies that's kind of different. It's, it's enough different from the B5, C5 that you might get more effectiveness just because of the change. So this is kind of a really important point. I think changing the pulse pattern, especially when you're dealing with, with brain issues, I think is really important. It's not like there's one magical frequency, but it's just the fact that your brain likes to see things change. Yeah. responds better wow that's really interesting okay so yeah but uh you could you could try I, the next one if i were you i would try is alpha wave and then maybe even some beta one two or three because that's kind of a little bit higher frequency um okay. same thing though but it's kind of geared in for brain sort of alertness awareness that kind of thing so okay. you know and it doesn't actually doesn't have the same effect on all people some people find it more stimulatory some people find it more kind of as almost like a sedative, but still they get the alertness without the excitement. Wow, this is really interesting. So, um, yeah, geez, is there anything else you want to tell me or ask? Because <laughs> I'm I'm actually blown away by this. This is this is exactly the kind of information I, I love it when people tell me because then I could share it. Well, I, I think um, one really crazy thing is that um, if there has been like a day or two where she missed the treatment for whatever reason. She does, doesn't do that now because I'm really <laughs> keen on making sure this gets it every single day. <laughs> but but, but, um, but a, um, a, a few months back, 
say that there was a day or two and again i was experimenting and you know n not every day was a, a, as good as the other one but what i noticed was that um let's say there was a day where she hadn't gotten treatment i guess you see the the effect the day after that that, that she actually got gone worse but then the really crazy thing is when i took it and put it on her head like within a few minutes i could feel a difference in in her um which Just is crazy her presence you could feel yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly she, she went like, like her whole personality changed so so she she went from being you know gone to being you know a bit more there um so there was really a, a shift in her awareness just by putting it on for you know a very short amount of time um so so so, 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 so 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 even even you know the plan is to have it on for say 30 minutes but right. even even within a few minutes I, I could see and feel and hear a difference in her right. and then the next day the biggest difference came so it's it, it's almost like it's it's starting a process or doing something and then the big effect of it comes you know a, a while after yeah see that's actually it's interesting that you mentioned that too because when people use the PMF for peripheral nerve, you know, uh -huh. like a compartment syndromes, like carpal tunnel and, and other like, you know, uh, nerve related stuff very often, they feel an effect that day. But um, it's oftentimes they say, yeah, it's the following day. And I think that has mm. something to do with the physiology of nerve, right? Because a lot of times nerves, if you start to squeeze an axon, like the long narrow part of the nerve, if you squeeze it at one point, you're shutting down its flow, its own internal fluid flow, and it makes it not work so well. And if you just relieve that pressure, then it can kind of sort of heal itself oh. and start to work again. And I, I think that process takes time, it takes, you know, maybe half a day or a day for it. Because some of your nerves are quite long, like nerves that go from your spine to your large muscles in your leg. They can be like a meter long, but they're only as big around as a cell. So it takes a really long time to reestablish that what's called axonal flow, right? And once you've let up the kind of the choke point, once you've released that, but yeah, you, you can get, you know, I can see that. And also in the brain, because the brain is so heavily networked. I mean, it's like the definition of a network, right? And you turn back on parts of the network. It's, it's reestablishing connections and reest because it's, it's, it's not just the area that you're stimulating, it's all the areas that that talks to. Right. And all those things kind of get, it's like a big switchboard. It just takes time to turn everything back on. That is so interesting. It, it's really interesting to me that you're making these very subtle and nuanced observations. So you really, you really seem to have the knack for helping people because a lot of people it's, it's hard to see these things, but you're clearly paying really close attention. It really sounds like you're helping your mother a lot. I, I almost, um, you're helping me a lot more than I'm able to help you right now, Martin. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact, man. All I can do is like send it to you in the mail and say, have at it, buddy. You know, I, I hope it keeps working for you. But yeah, you see, you're doing everything right. You're doing everything right. You're just, you're, you're experimenting with it. You're trying different things and you're making good observations. And then, you know, based on those observations, you change a little bit. I think, I think there's enough stuff built into that there's enough variations on this that I really hope your mother continues to progress. Wow. Wow. Is there anything else that I ought to, that I ought to know? Because you've already blown me away here with good stuff. <laughs> um, I don't want to go to the well too many times, but yeah, as much as you want to tell me, <laughs> I want to hear. Um, let me see. I think, um, well, I, th I think, I think we've, we've, we've covered the main, um, I'm trying to think because we, I've, I've had a lot of really interesting um, um, things happen over the course, you know, different experiments right. and, right. and, uh, and, and different things, but it's the, uh, oh yeah, one thing, yeah, that's right. There's, <laughs> there, there's one thing that was really, really crazy. Um, this was a, a few months ago and I was thinking about trying other points or other, other, you know, other, um, lo lo locations. And then I, I read somewhere that that maybe you know the the lower part behind your ear, like here. Yeah, I can see that. Right. That that that, that might be a good. Uh, a good... Yeah. Yeah. So so I thought, hmm, let let me try that. And so I took a coil on on other side, 
and, and then I watched for a few minutes and that really didn't do much of anything. And so I stacked them and the second I put best that con on, my mom got shivers. She was like, <laughs> oh, no, no. my goodness. Like, like almost instantly when I put on, she, she was like, her whole body got, 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 got shivers. And she was like, whoa, what was that? And, and then I took it off and I was like, whoa, that, that's crazy. And then I put it back on and then the same thing happened. And then I tried it again a few days later and the exact same thing happened. Wow. But that was only when it was double, double coil, but there was something there. It was like, it was, yeah. I was like, whoa, it was like instant. Wow, that's really, really interesting. You know, when you stack the coils, the intensity increases by about 60, 65%. So it might've just been that you did just enough to get the intensity high enough for really deep tissue stimulation. So uh, you might want to- okay. <laughs> still working so as you stack the coils not only does it change the flux lines for the magnet but it also when you stack them up like that it also like i said makes them about 65 percent if you go the same distance away say like two centimeters it'll be about 65 percent higher magnetic field roughly um so that might have might have just taken it across the threshold but that's but, that's great but but when you stack them does it does it increase the length of the field or does it just get stronger? It actually, the field itself, the whole thing gets stronger. So the field is this diminishing shape and space that it kind of just dissolves into nothing, but it dies okay. off very quickly. It dies off on axis, the axis between the coils. It reduces by the inverse cube. So it's like one over the distance cubed D to the third power and to the sides it drops off by one over d to the fourth power so it drops off very quickly much more fat quickly than light or anything like that so what wow. happens is if you if you double the coils roughly speaking at any given point it's going to be about 60 to 65 percent higher so so projecting it turns out that projecting a magnetic field into something is really quite difficult to do and hmm. you know but i mean you know the human body's relatively small and you can move these coils around like you can actually project more deeply if you separate the coil in some cases not all cases if you separate the coils then the the shape is sort of like a rugby ball in between the two coils it spreads out and compresses back to the other coil so what you're really doing with those two coils is that you're kind of manipulating this magnetic field in space and it's just pulsing on and off and that causes an electrical response physiologically and that's what's stimulating this is resulting electrical thing but the thing is that this is so unstudied nobody really knows for all of these different conditions nobody really has a like a book that you can look in that that's reliable some people make stuff up i, I you know can't stop that but they don't really have a book that would tell people what you're telling them so you kind of like almost like a healer and you have to just sort of try it gently and then and watch to see what happens. Right. And the nice thing about PEMF mm -hmm. is it's almost never an adverse effect, right? I don't really see negative effects on people. I don't really hear about them. And there's none in the scientific literature. You can read a thousand papers on PEMF and not really see anything about an adverse effect. So, so well, it's, we, it's pretty safe to do what you're doing, right? Experimenting. I haven't seen any anything negative at all um only positive so sometimes you get a little bit of a shiver like that happens to me sometimes if i use too much power on my lower back i can kind of feel it sort of tingling wow. control nervous systems i just turn the power down that's fine right because it's like anything else you, you can have too much but in your case with your mother i i think you're probably pretty close to the right intensity level to get you know the kind of effect you you really are looking for well that's really cool wow okay well i don't want to i don't want to take advantage of you by asking you too many. Oh, no worries go ahead if there's anything else gosh i think i think we've got it i think we've got it sort of if i can summarize you're talking about at least once a day every day if you can for half an hour to an hour maybe something like yes. that yes yes um trying different configurations for the coil side by side or or stacked right um, were you using a different one, like opposite no, sides? No, no, no. I no the 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 one the, the one I use now is always side by side. Side by side for your mother, right? So like yes. uh, top of the head, like here, sort of towards the back, or or the back. Yeah. Of the, so back of the top or at the base, sort of opposite your nose, right? Yeah. So top of the head, 
uh, the top back portion and then, and then here. So. And when you're saying side by side, yeah, I, I, okay, that's great. So side by side would be across the skull like this, not along the skull, right? Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And then um, you, you're using full intensity. Yes. And you use the B5, C5, or you're also yes. using um, to A9. Yeah, so that every. Yeah, maybe. Yes. So, one, so, when I, so when I use the B5 for, say, a week or two, I think the longest has been about two weeks. And then I noticed that, oh, she's starting to, you know, <laughs> go the other Not way. Not as responsive, yeah. Yeah, that's when I change it to, to A9. And that usually lasts for just a, a couple of days when I notice the same thing with A9. So B5 is definitely the, the more effective. And then A9 has a short effect for just a couple of days. And then I go back to B wow. to B5. Well, that's, that's really, really interesting. So... I guess rather than continue to, uh, to try to s extract information from you, I guess probably just uh, we'll end it right there and um, I'll just stop the recording now, okay? <laughs>